Hi, good evening. Welcome to the Research and Ranking webinar on investing during the time of COVID-19 and beyond. I have with me Jaspreet Singh, Chief Investment Officer at Research and Ranking. To give you a brief introduction, Jaspreet comes with a 17-year experience and has worked at least leadership positions with Systematics, Anandrati, Angel Broking, and others. Today, he will uncover all the confusion and chaos surrounding the impact of virus on the stock markets, as well as will guide you on how to build a robust portfolio to navigate smoothly during such uncertain times. Over to you, Jaspreet. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks, Harsh, for that lovely introduction. Uh, just um, a couple of points before I start. Uh, uh, Saturday, Saturday evening, 4 p.m. Uh, it's a weekend. Uh, I know it's, it's a not uh, so great time to um, talk about finance, stock market, and, and all that. But I'm sure. So we have we have kept the presentation light uh, and and crisp and uh, more interactive. You know, so that so that we don't uh, feel bored and we are you know energetic throughout the throughout the presentation. Um, Second, uh, just a disclaimer, there would be certain stocks that we would be discussing during uh, this presentation. Please uh, consider that as part of our uh, as educational tool uh, or learning and not as investment ideas. And, and lastly, uh, there might be certain slides that I might uh, skip through uh, due to paucity of time and certain slides, uh, you know, where we would tend to spend more time. Um, you know, we want to focus uh, uh, the, the larger messages in those slides. So, so just bear with me on that. As it is, we would be this video would be uploaded on YouTube uh, for viewing at a, at a later date and time uh, based on individual's uh, convenience. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what what are we going to discuss uh, today evening? Uh, what investors should do during the current scenario? What's the way ahead? Uh, investment strategies during and post pandemic. And lastly, the big one: investment philosophy and what are the stock selection criteria that RNR uh, uses to filter its stocks. Before I start, I just want to touch upon some of the characteristics of stock market and stock prices, which should be kept in mind by the investors. Number one, any news that we are hearing today, let's say there, there is a flash on the newspaper GDP is expected to go down 2%. Two weeks later, we hear GDP is expected to go down by 5%, maybe 9% in the current financial year. Believe me, it's already discounted. And I'm saying discounted, it's discounted in the market, in the stock market. Why? How do I, how do I say that? See, the index fell from 12,500, almost 12,500, the Nifty from to about 7,500 on 24th March itself, right? While the lockdown was announced on the same day. Now, what does it show that the market had discounted that event much earlier. Uh, to corroborate that, you know, India had, I guess, less than 1,000 cases by that day. US had less than 10,000 cases by that day. Um, and still the index had, had come off uh, significantly. And what do we have today? India is touching 4 lakhs. US is more than, you know, almost reaching 23 lakhs, right? But the market is, is, is far in a better shape shape today. What And that, that's, that's, you know, enough. Uh, to understand it, it you know, to, to validate that point, it discounts all this information uh, a month, two months, maybe three months uh, in advance. Number two, the stock market is a good barometer of the times to come and doesn't like uncertainty. I just want to highlight the word uncertainty. Very, very important. And we'll discuss it in, in detail later. Volatility and risk, two important words, jargons not to be missed, right? We can live with volatility and it's part of our life, part of the stock market. Risk is, is, is something that we will should have far better control, right? Uh, and, and therefore, it depends on person to person, portfolio to portfolio, right? And you can, you can do far, I mean, number of steps can be initiated to control the risk, to mitigate the risk. Volatility is, you know, beyond a point you cannot, you cannot control and should be considered as, as part and parcel of, of, uh, of, of, of you know, uh, uh, market when it's going through such, such uh, kind of pandemics. Number four and last, stock market is a place where people with money meet people with experience. And what happens at the end? People with money get the experience 
and people with experience get the money so the idea is to you know the, this point is is largely trying to highlight two points one is you need to be in the market uh, invest, invest 10% 20% you know at least to start with to really get a feel flavor you know get that real time experience rather than just waiting on the outside and trying to you know wait for that right just that right moment it, it you won't get that right second we you know as 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 rnr we have enough expertise you know at research at operations at a company level we have over 150 people today so we have enough bandwidth manpower experience to guide the investors uh, you know the way forward okay it's a very interesting slide and i'm sure you would you would correlate with that uh, very important point to note the markets are driven by liquidity sentiment earnings and earnings not necessarily in that order it could be you know in any which way so the period between june 19 19 till about end of january 20 was all determined by earnings earnings and earnings the stocks which are showing good earnings were having a good time while the stocks which is not not having a good uh, time was obviously not you know backed by good earnings what happened in starting 3rd of february uh, the 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 virus you know uh, uh, increased you know beyond the the territories of china it 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 went to us you know us started uh, uh, going down the us markets and when it uh, it started happening with india as well then the indian markets also started uh, tanking so that's the sentiment that's how and as i explained in the previous slide uh, one sentiment the rules it doesn't take into account earnings it doesn't take into account am i discounting too much too high and believe me it happens in the in the reverse way also when uh, you know i mean to, to talk about 2007 just positive sentiment was so much that every second stock was was touching its 52 week low that was the time in 2007 uh, what's happened in the last three months uh, after 24th march till date first liquidity and 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 equally important is sentiment put the two together market is now back showing very good strength uh, and what it means is the people are starting to look markets beyond the pandemic so our next topic what are we taking in as a short and medium term outlook so the three questions that that there on the investors radar is this is a temporary rise in the market a big fall is yet to come market is not moving on fundamentals so but on news and speculation why should one invest now and not wait for the situation to become better top three questions let us try and answer this so just to show the you know coronavirus uh, impact so far in india and worldwide uh, this is just a you know tabular representation of uh, not only the number of cases uh, it also had also has the total cases on a a million population which is as you see is 267 for india uh, is 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 the lowest in this in this bracket the total deaths on a per million population is also the lowest in 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 this in this bracket which is at 9 and believe me there are very few countries out of i think 200 plus countries i think 40 odd countries have it in single digit but if you take the take the top 25 or top 30 largest or the most impacted countries india would probably be amongst the lowest uh, two or three um, so that's that's the correlation uh, or that's that's the you know india's position vis-a-vis -vis other countries you look at mortality rate we are at 3.3% the world average is 5.3% so the larger message here is or or the conclusion here is that we are in a much better position than than some of the other countries things are far more in control and why is that possibly you we had you know enough enough lead time it started with china then us we had enough lead time you know learning uh, getting learning from south korea china um, uh, the the international traffic uh, to and fro from india uh, to india is is lesser compared to other destinations possibly we have a climate advantage we are, we we hardly face i mean our, our winters here is is less than 3 months and that too only in select geographies and when it hit we were in march uh, and we were getting more into the summer zone um, and not to forget our our inherent strength uh, of india as you know ayurved or, or naturopathy and therefore which means our strong immunity systems and this is again nobody nobody can take that away from india in, in the foreseeable future these trends will remain what has india done compared to other global markets so again we're just looking at some of some of the bigger economies here so like russia is down 17% 
um, Brazil is down, uh, you know, Russia is down 19, Brazil is down 17, uh, Nifty is down 16%. This is again about a day, uh, this is still updated till day before. So Nifty is down 16%. How, how is it compared to China? China obviously is, is much higher. The Shanghai is up seven and, and the SSE 100 is up 21. But the Dow Jones, more importantly, the Dow Jones, the DAX, and S&P are very close to where they were on the 3rd of February. So there's a lot of catch up. That, that's the view and, and we should do this. I mean, we're not saying we're gonna, we're gonna get there very soon. The larger message here is, is that there is a catch up and th therefore there is a case for India if it's, if it's not impacted as much as a Germany or a US, therefore it shouldn't be impacted as much on an on a index level. Okay, this is this is where it gets really more interesting. So we're talking of two dates, all right. One is 18th of June, which is which is day before, and we're talking of 13th of March. Uh, index is broadly the same, you know, round figure of 10,000, Nifty 10,000. But the parameters, the the factors, the conditions, very very stark. Why do I say that? The coronavirus cases per additions on a, on a daily basis globally were rising every day uh, on, on, in, in, in March. Now it, it, it seems to have peaked out. Uh, the vaccine development, very important. We had not even started of talking of vaccine at that, that stage. Today, uh, it seems we are in, at a very, very advanced stage and it's just a matter of, you know, month or two before it, before it you know, starts coming out, uh, uh, you know, from, from the factories of uh, some of the uh, countries like a China or in India, obviously commercial will start a day, uh, a month or two after that. But the moment somebody announces vaccine is, is there and it's, it's been commercially successfully tested and proven, I think that is where things could look far, far better. Uncertainty, as I said, stock markets do not like uncertainty. Very, very important. It was very high. The uncertainty was very high in the month of March. Today, it's moderate. Very, very in control. The lockdown status globally uh, then in the month of March, very select companies, uh, countries had, had started it. Today, uh, most countries have started lifting it, right? And then we were talking of lockdown one, two, three, I'm talking about in India scenario four, and we entered five as well, I think. Yeah, and now we're talking of unlock, unlock 1.0. I think uh, maybe maybe week or two, we would hear, hear unlock 2.0. Right, uh, where we would we would open up like like malls and gyms and theaters, and maybe maybe unlock three where we open the multiplexes as well. Right, we open we open air traffic um, inbound outbound, uh, you know, even outside India. That's 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 going to be, be you know, where where we end up. Um, similarly, lockdown in India was not even contemplated. We are slowly and steadily we are lifting the lockdown most states. Volatility index uh, index you know was was 51. It had risen from. 30 in the month of so and it peaked at 84 or 85 uh, uh, in on 24th March. Today it's, it's again back to where it started at, at 31. This again measures the kind of you know uncertainty, volatility, the jitteriness that's there in the system. And last but but very important, the GDP forecast estimate in the month of March we had I mean when I'm saying we had the stock market participants uh, you know had very little clue where the economy headed because we were in an uncertain zone, right? And believe me, as I said, stock market does not like uncertainty. The moment it sees uncertainty, it starts, you know, there is a there is a, there is a shivering, there is there is a uh, there is a panic, and you know what? Panic when panic sets in, uh, the index is down from eleven half to seven half before even could, we could blink an eye. Today we have numbers, right? It could be minus two percent GDP decline. It could be five percent decline. Or it could be in a worst case nine percent decline, but at least we know the range, right? We know where it's headed. That's the difference. And similarly for for financial year uh, 22, we were looking at six and a half seven percent. Now the same global uh, agencies are talking of eight and a half nine, eight eight to nine percent growth in the next financial year. We have we have numbers now where we can put a hold. Okay, so what does it mean for the investors? You know the larger point we are trying to drive here is if there's a crisis if there's an also an opportunity right it's not that opportunity will come on on a normal on a normal day right i mean you get opportunities but the big opportunity 37 percent down nifty from feb to march and that happens once in 10 years we saw that happening in in, in 2008 
2008 um, and and early uh, end of 2008 uh, it has it has happened after after 10 years that you know the index has fallen so much uh, why we think this is an opportunity i think uh, you know if you consider the fact that as we discussed the death rate here in india the mortality rate is far lower uh, and if, when you compare that with other disease like a tb or a road accidents uh, it's again very much in control so if you let fear overpower your your emotions and everything I mean, there's no end to that uh, i'm just taking a quote from from the famous uh, industrialist and 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 md promoter of, of bajaj auto uh, mr rajiv bajaj he said fear is more contagious than the virus itself you can learn to live with covid 19 not with fear very apt quote right if you let fear get into your mind there's this there's no you can't even think of you know going out onto a road because because you might you know uh, uh bump into someone a bike or something and and similarly i mean um there is there is a point up to which you can you can let fear control you point number 2 is the long term value of a business cannot go down 40 to 50% just because there's a pandemic right the moment you see there is a 40 to 50% decline one should use that as an opportunity to to get into the market or 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 you know uh do do uh uh cost uh, where you you're trying to average your average your stock and and you have a much better cost uh, next uh, i think big reforms uh, only happen in such crisis we we saw in 1991 uh, uh, the, the big reforms that happened because india was in a, in a position and you know you you had the um, the, the big uh, reforms you know initiated by by mr manmohan singh uh, and now we we are having reforms like coal mining agri and there are many more you know in the offering that that would kind of help the economy move to the to the next level and lastly i think all multi baggers have roots when investors have bought them in a crisis i just highlighted some examples kotak was was nobody had heard of kotak when it was a sub 100 crore market cap and it was one of those few standing in bfcs in 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 late 90s today it's a 2 and a half lakh crore market cap she cement was almost bankrupt you know 2002 the promoters were almost contemplating of exiting and today and they decided not to and today what do we see is a 100 bag of right from 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 60 crore it's a it's a, a 60000 crore market cap ever since from 2002 till date 100x i mean this is a commodity we are talking of um 2008 again the next uh, the last big opportunity india had seen um what were some of the uh, multi baggers then i think which have risen 25x avanti astral relax so ajanta pharma Bajaj Finance, right? Uh, NBFC, uh, Atul Limited, Safari, Sera Page. I mean, the list can go on and on. I'm just highlighting some of the names which which investors can resonate with. So the bottom line here is that if there is a crisis, there is also an opportunity. It's up to us whether we want to encash on that opportunity and tide away with that time and 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 you know live through for the next three or four years and five years to to. to get to the wealth objectives that we have set okay uh, not to complicate but just you know it's 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 more used by by uh, management gurus and and uh, you know the the the, the global uh, agencies like fed and, and and even by rbi you know there is this uh, there is this phase where you know we move we tend to move from a period of absolute certainty i'm saying when i'm saying absolute it means again on a relative basis to an absolute uncertainty this is what happened when india moved from a from a phase of known knowns to unknown unknowns uh, from the left top quadrant to the right bottom quadrant um, and that was swift that was one and a half that was one and a half months uh, it happened we moved very quickly from a phase of unknown unknowns to known unknowns between march end of march to uh april uh, and, uh end of march to may uh, so what i'm saying here is when you're talking of things i think we're talking of risk the risk is identified the risk is well understood which is a known known when you're moving into an unknown unknown you don't know you don't know the risk and you don't know the magnitude of that risk right but when you're moving from an unknown unknown to a known unknown you know the risk you're very well aware of the risk it is just that the magnitude of the risk is still not as much known as it should be right and we have moved two months i think from march 
three months. March to June, we have moved three months by now. I think we are more than halfway through in terms of understanding the magnitude of this risk, right? I think the last stage is when you move from known unknowns to known knowns. Uh, that is, I think, it will take about maybe another quarter. And what will preempt that? I think the the fact that the the number of cases globally and in India is controlled. Vaccine is available. A, 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 a proven medical cure is available. And you know, as things are happening globally, and and you know, uh, the most medical experts are onto it. I think we should have much of this uh, uh, ready in the next quarter itself. So what's our, what's our short term view conclusion? Um, markets tend to be overheated uh, once in a while. Um, the lows of March uh, are, is, is unlikely to be tested. That's, that's, that's a confidence based on the fact that, you know, the, the, the curve has flattened uh, for, the, for, the, for the COVID vaccine development at one stage. And there's this big fiscal stimulus that has been provided, the $10 trillion on a, on a base of 65. That's more than 15%. India did uh, India did over over 10 percent, and there, there are some economies which did more than 15 percent. So therefore, this this you know uncertainty between now, uh, which is now, and maybe next couple of months that we need to navigate, and 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 then we'll be we'll be back to uh, life uh, as close to normal as as possible. Therefore, I think if anyone is looking at FI21, please be assured market is is very well aware that FI21 is. Is, is, is going to be is going to be bad. FY21 first quarter is going to be a wash out. So let's not get too worried or too scared on that because it's, it's as I said in my previous slide, market knows it. It's discounting it. You know, maybe another three months down the line, we would be looking at FY22. Things could be far more uh, far more rosier uh, than it than it is today. So just focus on the balance sheet, not on not on PNL. Uh, Balance sheet is one thing. Balance sheet. If the company survives the next three months, it's already survived the last three months. If it survives the next three months, um, it will definitely come out of it uh, very, very handsomely, and and should survive uh, the month after that. So if the balance sheet is solid, the promoter is solid, the business is, is 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 doing reasonably okay. I think the next three or four months is what it just needs to navigate. Okay, there are some of the green shoots. I think what uh, it tends to get um, missed uh, during such times. I'm just highlighted some of them. This is by no means exhaustive. This is just a uh, five or six examples I'm showing. The FMCG industry, which was part of essentials, the utilization rate was 30 to 40 percent in the month of April. It moved up to 70 to 80 percent, and it's as close to you know 80, 80, 80 to 80 to 90 percent in the current month. Uh, the semi-discretionary like white goods, uh, electricals, they have moved from 30-40% utilization to 50-60% utilization now. Um, Reliance Geo, I mean that that took the concept of work from home to a different level. Uh, they they just uh, they just said that we are not going to get perturbed or, or or take our you know fundraising put our fundraising in a backseat. They actually have raised more than a lakh crore in I think over seven or eight tranches by now. Um, and that's humongous. I mean, you have very few companies uh, raising that kind of uh, money uh, globally, not even India. Uh, HUL had, had seen a big block sale by, by, by Glaxo. Uh, that was over 30,000 crores. Kotak had done a QIP and a block, big 13,000 crore. So that means there's money available uh, for quality stocks. What, is, what are some of the heavyweights doing? Maruti, it went ahead and tied up with M&M, with Mahindra Finance, HDFC Bank. Chola, ICICI, and these are new tie-ups. These are new partnerships that, that the company is forging to give attractive rates, good schemes to the client. Boja Pays just you know, introduced a new product, uh, uh, which, which they call antimicrobial powder coating to the healthcare institutions so that you know the, the bacteria uh, uh, and the microbes are, are less harmful. Uh, Zara, I mean, so you know, you would have seen the heading Zara has decided to shut shop, shut some of the stores globally. But you also need to be, you know, aware that in India it plans to continue its expansion, right? That shows that it's just not one side of the picture, one side of the coin that one needs to focus on. I'm just using Titan as a case study here, and this is only Titan what you see uh, on, on on this slide. So the last column what you see is the retail sales of Titan has almost half to what it was doing pre-COVID. So if pre-COVID the units sold was 100, 
which is in the month of February. Today they are selling 50, and that's a, and this, believe me, that's a very good, very good achievement because we're talking of four months, less than four months, and we're talking of a discretionary item like Titan, right? It's not an essentials here we're talking of. And and across formats, you can see in trade they're doing 30%. Large format, the large format is obviously the likes of and clone lifestyle uh, and central um, shopper stop. Uh, they are not open as much, and therefore the number is, is lower. And e-commerce, as we all know, digital is is, the, is in, and therefore that is doing a good business. So you know, this is just an example of how. Uh, I mean, let me just take you to more examples, right? Uh, Marico, I mean, uh, has launched this veggie clean. Uh, Amul has has Amul and company of South Dairy Day. They launched uh, ginger and tulsi based dairy products, uh, chowder crush, ice creams. I mean, if one goes out and is really trying to eat, you know, in, in, is, is feeling to eat ice cream and he gets this flavor of chowder crush versus other product, I mean, he would be tempted, right? I mean, so companies are innovating. They are adapting to the to the, to the, to the current environment, right? Uh, so did Mother Dairy, HUL, Domex. Uh, a lot of products, Dabur, in fact, had a, had a Suraksha kit right uh, which 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 they launched especially for for where you get mask and gloves right and 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 and, and face shields uh, for somebody who's 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 uh, looking out uh, for for protection gears and i mean i mean Dabur has had that history so they had this plethora of products uh, which which they kind of pushed hard uh, because there was demand there was a requirement like tulsi based haldi based right and and uh, sanitizer products and, and so on and so forth uh, Asian paints, yeah. I mean, uh, look at the way they have. They've gone ahead. In fact, there's an interesting ad you, you should should you should see on YouTube where you know the 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 painters with 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 complete gear and masks and shields. They are they would be doing the painting at home, and they will ensure that everything is is taken care of. That's the level of um, innovation, uh, adaptability, communication that that. Companies are, are are trying to do so as to ensure that that clients, customers feel absolute safe when it comes to indulging in, in their products. Okay, so next, so now what do we look at the long term picture? Um, SNP, Fitch, they're all talking of negative. We've discussed negative five percent, positive eight percent, nine percent growth uh, in in the current year and next year respectively. Um, but believe me. Uh, the moment you start focusing on more on on current years of the fact that the next year could the jump could be far higher because you have a low base right i mean just to prove a point 2008 the gdp fell from 8% uh, to to 3% right from 3 8% in 2007 we fell to 3% 2008 the gdp but in just a year's time, we moved back to 8% in 2009, right? Um, so I think it's just gonna, by the time we realize that, that you know, a, a minus 5% is not a minus 5 as much, and it's it's probably much lower, or, you know, you, you start taking into account that, you know, moving into September, October, November, uh, you know, markets will focus, start for putting their focus, energy, visibility, and more on FY22 earnings. You start looking, which, which is obviously a much rosier, healthier picture, right? As as things start today. So the larger idea of this is 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 that one needs to, uh, you know, kind of ignore and accept the fact that the current year will be challenging, especially the first half, right? So let's let's focus our energies on the fact that life will come back to normal, and then how does the earnings look like for all these companies that we are trying to understand? The the long term. Nifty, you know, P has has hovered between 18 and, and 22 times, and you know, just trying to highlight on the right side quadrant. If one takes that as a band and takes Nifty EPS of 529 as as a as a base case, uh, the range of Nifty that we are looking at for the next one year is between nine and a half thousand to eleven thousand six hundred, based on that long term range of 18 to 22 times PE. Now, why why are we taking 529? I think that's just a Base case, as I said, there could be a deviation uh, depending on how how things uh, evolve over the next uh, two quarters. So we're taking a 20% decline in current year uh, and and 35% jump the year after. So 
important points to note the big correction phase is over let's not try and wait again for that index of 7500 8000 8500 very unlikely that we're going to see that phase that was an uncertain phase we've discussed that before uh, we are no more in that uncertain phase today secondly you know at 16 times pe which is at 8500 market cap jumps 50% long term average is 75 85% Uh, it becomes really, really juicy, right? That's eight and a half thousand. And so, therefore, the larger recommendation is below nine thousand eight hundred, nine thousand seven hundred. If one wants to really wait more, maybe nine thousand five hundred. That is where where you start going out and and uh, start dipping in and, and buying in some of the attractive opportunities. Let's not wait for that. Uh, the big fall, uh, it, it 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 may just not come, or even if it comes, it may be so swift that we may not be able to. So let's keep some uh, drag and order, but at the same same time start looking at every fall as an opportunity to get back to the market, keeping nine thousand five hundred as the as the immediate downside risk. Okay, so the long term positives are fine. We we are what is going on. And, and and we need optimistic. You know, the moment you start investing in the market, you need to have that optimist. Otherwise, uh, it just doesn't uh, gel uh, with, with with the fact that you're. Uh, and there are numerous numerous examples, right? Clients have made money, uh, and there's no case. Uh, last ten years, there has been wealth creation, and no reason why next ten is there will not be wealth creation. Um, so, what are those? Some of those positives, uh, the tax cuts we've already seen. A lot of companies are looking at that strategy of China plus one. India could be a beneficiary. We have already seen a lot of reforms in India. GST demonetization. We are likely we are going to see something very drastically new, which which you know uh, disembarks the India's growth story uh, from next year onwards. Given that you know there has been uh, not so great uh, response uh, in some state elections that 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 the government has lost. Uh, the world index we discussed is fine. Control today. It's at It's at uh, 31 p. 84. We are close to close to the normal times, and uh, not forgetting the global. I mean, globally, the oil prices have far more lower today, um, and and you know we're looking at close to 35, in excess of 30 billion dollars of savings, which is equivalent to one percent of India's GDP. Uh, and you combine that the fact that you know there's already more than 100 bips of interest rate cuts. Uh, so combine that to all these. Will will come back and and help India uh, at at in, in terms of the earnings uh, next year. Uh, much of it in the fact that we need to. So what are some of the long term trends? Uh, so what we are trying to highlight is the three phases when India has doubled its GDP. So let's say we are at third three trillion dollars today. So the phase was F I twelve to F I nineteen when we doubled from one and a half to three. The previous phase was 7 to 12, then we doubled from 0.75 to one and a half, and likewise the five, six years prior. So the every time we double the profit, the first phase profit in on 100 percent jump in GDP, the profits jumped 400 percent. The next time it it doubled, the profits jumped up 93 percent. While the last time the GDP doubled, the profits had gone up. Uh, so that that leaves a lot of room for expansion in terms of capital, um, and it's going to happen. It just will not be delayed by a year or two, but it ultimately it will it will catch up. Now, second point is the sector rotation, right? Uh, year 2007 till 2007, reality, yeah, auto, what uh, what infra, more of anything infra, but that was the hot spots that they were the things of, of of the market. 2007 to 12, it was largely. Uh, the the private banks right the, some of the NBFCs which had which had thrived and that somehow autos was was doing really really well last seven years uh, we have seen uh, you know NBFCs taking it to the next level the growth story uh, if private banks contributed immediately uh, thereafter and and consumption and IT have followed I think the next set the larger point we're trying to make is that there will be growth stories some Sectors will continue their growth. Some new sectors will 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 add to that uh, old sectors. We are agile and and we will continue our efforts to ensure that we are adding fresh sectors, the win the winning sectors to our portfolio every time there is a sector rotation.
Okay, so how 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 do we ensure that our portfolios are um, having the best in terms of flavors, right? in terms of sectors, the market caps, um, in terms of the number of stocks and all that. So the basic tenets on which we are having our portfolio today is we are focusing on 20 to 22 stocks uh, at a portfolio level. The market cap bias today is, 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 is obviously in favor of large caps. We are two third large cap, one third mid caps and mid caps here includes a small cap as well. Uh, the long term steady state, if you were to ask me, it's a 50-50. So the moment we, we think the risk on trade is back, people are looking at life beyond COVID, earnings are falling in place. Uh, the downstream India is, is coming. We have study 40%, as I said, in a steady state, maybe six months down the line, we come back. Um, right now, obviously, higher allocation is, is given to large cap because we just want to ensure that our companies are surviving and then thriving. Uh, so we just want healthier balance sheets, and that's largely available in the large cap as of today. So how do we, what's our ABC uh, of, of investing? Uh, so the way we look at it, we, we try and bucket uh, the stories that we have, the portfolio stocks that we have in three three buckets, uh, in, th in three pockets. One is what we call an all weather, right? Uh, second is what we call a business momentum, which is a high growth, right? Their growths are higher, uh, uh, 50 to 60% higher than that seen in all weather. And the third is a circle of opportunity. You see, you see isolated cases in a telecom, you see, uh, you see in, 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 in uh, infrastructure that, that might do well. So that is where we keep 10% of our uh, of our allocated uh, allocation assigned for that. Uh, the other two buckets are, are largely uh, you know equal. Uh, but in the current environment, if you were to ask me, how is our current portfolio uh, tilted? It's tilted more towards an all weather, which is more than 55% today. Uh, there uh, maybe about 45 40 percent is, is towards a business momentum stocks and the last five percent is for uh, opportunity the circle of opportunity so if we combine with this you know all we're looking at is a weighted average earnings growth of 20 percent right over the next three years five years seven years and if you combine that with a re-rating potential of let's say six percent ten percent if it's six percent, you get a twenty-six percent compounding engine. If you get ten percent, we're re-rating. You get a you get a thirty percent compounding engine, and and therefore you get a three x, four x, five x, six x in the coming years. That's the broad uh, philosophy, the approach with which we are having our current portfolio construct. Uh, filters um, just differentiated between qualitative and quantitative. We 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 ensure that it it has passed the muster of. Uh, you know, the sector leadership, there is enough industry tailwind, the, the disclosure standards, the corporate, uh, the governance, the alloc capital allocation, everything fits into place, right? And they are survivors. They have navigated the last few storms that have come, come in India. That's more in terms of qualitative. Quantitatively, you know, it's, it's, it's the last uh, five years, uh, uh, in most cases, 10 years track record. How have they delivered in terms of earnings? How they deliver in terms of return capital, free cash flows. How much? How many times they have delivered free cash flows out of the last ten years? Is it just two, twice? Is it eight times, or it's never? Right. That's a very important barometer. Um, and obviously, some of the other nuances like what's the beta, what's the kind of a FI holding, uh, what's the promoter holding, how much is is, is the pledge uh, pledge, and and how much is the balance sheet theory. Obviously, it it would differ from sector to so sector. Obviously, a bank may not be may not have a, 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 a the same filter of, uh, as it's been there in other sectors, sectors because they are the, the, the beta is high, the FI holding is high, the 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 the, the balance sheet gearing is high, but then obviously you, you have to exclude those kind of pockets and, and look at it. This is largely for other sectors. In terms of sector allocation, um, how we how are we pocketing um, putting our money if, if we have hundred rupees today, how will we um, spreading it across sectors so clearly our number one bet is consumer discretionary and then that includes auto as well so that's about 25 percent this is it could be it could be semi-discretionary or it could be ultra discretionary but larger pocket of this is, is semi-discretionary uh, where you have the paints the building materials uh, the electrical goods 
clothes, right? The footwear, uh, uh, the retail story. That's that's a big portion of of, of this. Uh, discretionary bucket. The next big bucket is obviously the, the heavyweight, which is the banking sector. Again, there we are uh, we are equally focused on high growth stories like insurance, uh, etc. Uh, next comes uh, the staple steady state, which is part of our all weather as we as we discussed in the earlier slide. It's part of our all weather bucket. The, the staples, they tend to grow 10%, 15%, 20% year after year for the last um, five years, 10 years, 15 years. And the new age uh, not new age or the companies which are just company sectors which are now coming out, which is chemicals, which is pharma, which is telecom, right? Uh, one not sector, it's an IT. That also has a fair mix in our in our overall share. Uh, and a little bit of allocation also goes to the economy facing, which is which is uh, the cement and the infra and building material space. So to conclude, um, ah, we, we are there on the last slide. Um, very important not to forget, and, and this is also a uh, um, our, our summary of, of how what we communicate and we keep on stressing through different formats, uh, different forums. Uh, obviously, we have discussed enough of COVID, so we need to understand that life moves beyond COVID. We need to adapt, we need to understand, we need to appreciate and move on. And there is life. That's a new normal. Point number two is if we keep on waiting on the sidelines, uh, it, it, market's going to Again, give us an opportunity and we will again miss it. Uh, it's only if we are ready, we are trying to, we, we, we are committed that we commit with 10% money today uh, at, at the pay minimum or 20% or 30%. I mean, we in fact are advising 40 to 50% in selected stocks. Um, you will you will definitely uh, get, uh, get attractive opportunities and uh, chances to, to, to do bottom fishing. Uh, in some of these stocks, if if uh, that's why we are recommending to have some uh, dry gun powder. Please keep three to five years as an investment horizon and only invest as much as you have that you could allocate the market for that uh, period. Very importantly, there's a lot of information that's available today and that will hit your inbox, uh, your computers, more importantly, your mobiles uh, through a WhatsApp or a Twitter. Uh, and more than half of it is actually not required. Uh, uh, if you're investing with a with a clear mindset that it's there for for long term, uh, and we will not get perturbed by that, all this will only uh, you know take away or, or distract us from that from that journey. And timing again, just not just not the uh, correct way. I mean that's important. That's exactly why you know, uh, SIPs have become so 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 uh, relevant, steady, and, and important today. Uh, and, and that's that's the, that's a precise point. Let's not try and time the market. Um, you buy today, you buy tomorrow, you buy next month, you buy six months later as well. Just be aware what's the kind of portfolio you're trying to build, what's the investment horizon, what's the risk appetite, and therefore, you know, build a strategy and, and work accordingly. Let's not try and only look at only look at. Uh, uh, index levels at Nifty is at a certain level. Now I will only buy once it comes to this level and then wait for the next step. It may just not, uh, the moment index comes down, we start looking at, uh, thinking that it may come down further. Why not wait Wait further? I think that's that's where I where I stop. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good 40 minute of, uh, 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 chat, uh, monologue that, that, that I have. Uh, thank you so much for your time, really appreciate it. Um, and we would look forward to, to answering some of the questions that, that our investors would have um, uh, on, on, on our chat box. Um, I think Harsh is already ready with, with some of his questions. Um, and there's a lot of uh, questions which are coming on China. Um, uh, it's, China is becoming the hotspot. Uh, over to you, Harsh. Uh, I'll just take a 60 second breather. Thanks a lot, Jaspreet. This was really, really insightful. And for you, I have received a few questions. I don't know if I'll be able to take all, but uh, let me start. The first question is, we've seen Delhi COVID cases rise up again. What if there would be a lockdown in the metro cities like Delhi is suffering, Chennai is suffering, Bombay is still, Mumbai is still not back to normal. 
what if there is a lockdown in the US and uh, how will it impact the stock markets? Oh, that's a that's a uh, not so difficult one. Not so, that's not. Uh, 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 so uh, I think uh, you know Mumbai is already seeing a fair bit of a lockdown. Even even then, you see fair amount of activity which is which has resumed. Uh, in fact, Delhi is, is the resumption of activity is even higher. I think it's only select pockets like uh, which are which are still going through that strict lockdown, which is I think uh, Mumbai, Chennai, Ahmedabad, and, and so, some part of some part of Delhi. Um, I think, but this is. Uh, the fact that we are in control of things that we have gone through the phase of March, April, um, and we know how to how how life uh, can move, uh, you know, during the period of COVID, it, it's far more uh, easier now to be in grip of things and, and handle such situations. So even if there was was to have uh, in an extreme situation another phase of lockdown, I think it may it may be very very short lived. Uh, and it may just be opened maybe in a week or 10 days or two weeks uh, after that. But I don't really see that situation happening. And, and um, I think if if India is is at a, at a pan-India level, if we are at a, a resumption of activity, let's say we are at 70% today, um, it will be close to 70%. I think it's only going to increase month after month. Uh, again, at a, at a pan-India level and, and that entire number. Um, Individual cities might might have a deceleration. Other cities might have an acceleration. Gross level, I think we should be close to normal. Uh, I mean, that's that's what the experts are saying, and that's 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 what the the wide consensus is that much before uh, uh, Diwali, we, we should be back to normal on all areas. So the next question is from the next question is completely in contrast to what what the previous question was and that is if the covid situation improves really fast where do we see the markets heading maybe by end of december 2020 and by end of december 2021 where how do we see the markets moving okay that's that's an interesting question uh, thanks Arsh. um I think so. As we discussed in our in our one of the slides, uh, the moment you start moving towards end of the year, uh, and we have far more confidence in terms of that the vaccine is available, uh, it, it's 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 being widely used, uh, and we are eighty percent. If we are not hundred percent, but we are eighty percent out of this pandemic, and that we are now looking at earnings of March twenty two, not March twenty one. I think there is no reason why we should we should not cross uh, the previous highs that we made at let's say twelve thousand two hundred on on Nifty. Uh, so our sense is, if not December, uh, latest by the the before the end of this financial year, uh, which is before March of twenty one, we should be able to comfortably cross 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 that levels. Uh, and and beyond that, I think again will will depend on how quickly we come back to uh, 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 normalcy and we we in fact start we. We come back to that phase of growth. I just want to make a point here is again, you know, and we, we try to mix it up and we, I mean, at, for investors, it's very important to understand. See, we are, we, here we are trying to uh, create a basket of only 2022 20, stocks, right? Which, which will grow irrespective, you know, whether, whether uh, the broader market is, is growing as much or not. It may just so happen if the broader market is is, is growing ten uh, percent, their fuel engine will allow them to grow at twenty percent. But it doesn't mean that that they, their growth will will come down significantly for for many years just because there was a pandemic. So there will always be opportunities. Uh, that that uh, see in the last uh, one year uh, or, or let's say the phase as as we as we as we discussed uh, the February nineteen till February twenty. Index was just about flat, 11,000, 11,500, 12,000, right? But there were still stocks which which had grown, right? So all we're looking at is to ensure that our eggs are, are, are spread you know, across baskets. We are not overly concentrated, and we have the flavor of uh, much of those growth sectors uh, and, and and the right pockets, uh, uh, and and we have enough dry can powder. I mean. Uh, it could be 5% in some of our portfolios, it could be uh, 20% in, in, in others. 
uh, depending on the investor appetite and what stage of the market we are we are recommending. Uh, so if if one follows that, I think the it's 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 uh, beyond the point. Looking at the larger Nifty uh, may not be as relevant. So it's just focus on our portfolio companies, 20, 25 companies, and I think we are sorted. So it's a very interesting question that I have to make. Uh, economy is like a chain, and for many sectors which are badly hit, like hospitality, airlines, etc. And there are certain other sectors which are really moving good at such times. Where can we see the economy industry as a whole and how will it have an impact on the Nifty? Okay, so as we, um, you know, this was one of the slides we shared that if, if economy is, um, if you're looking at a GDP uh, decline of five, uh, five, six percent this year, um, I think the, the revenue declines will be, will be in double digit between anywhere between at an aggregate level. This is again at a, at a Let's, if one takes Nifty 500 as a benchmark, uh, 10 to 15 percent, uh, maybe slightly more, um, at, a, at a revenue level. And as we discussed, right, I take in a, um, Nifty as EPS as an as a example, we're looking at 20 percent decline. Uh, in some cases, so some sectors, as you rightly said, hospitality, aviation, um, multiplex, will the decline will be more than 50 percent. In isolated case, it could be 70, 80 percent as well. Uh, but the larger point is that. The jump in the year March 22 will be equally ferocious uh, and, 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 and will happen. In some cases, it, it, it may recover more than half of what it has lost. In fact, in some cases, it, it may recover 80% of what it's lost. In some cases, it may recover to the fullest. Right? Just an example is that uh, our EPS of 100 has moved to 50. 50 definitely will move to, in some cases, 70, in some cases, 80, in some cases, back to 100 or maybe even higher in the year after, which is March 22. Um, so I think um, one needs to take, uh, if one is having, as I said, uh, which is our buckets that we had, the ABC, uh, if one is not having too many stocks in that in that um, sector, which is some of those momentum stocks or, or the, the circle of opportunity, if the portfolio is not tilted too much, then obviously it will be far easier to navigate uh, the, the, the next uh, two to three quarters. The next question is about the known unknown, which is China. Will, how, how badly will the markets be impacted with what's happening with China right now? Well, that's a very uh, uh, difficult one or, or a very interesting one at the same time. Uh, so you know, China today is, is, is battling all kinds of wars uh, with, with all economies. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's face, I mean, it's it's battling a medical war, a medical crisis where everyone everyone kinds to. A majority of the economies believe that, that China was it was not able to control at the right time and, and, and could have been in fact um, it the, the spread could have been contained had it taken steps at the right time or forewarned some of the larger economies, the much in advance. Uh, the other is uh, in terms of the tariff wars, which it keeps on having with with economies like US. Um, and, and the power and the desire to be the, the supreme, um, and, and obviously replace the U.S. at some point of time. And last is not what is now coming is is is, is the political stroke uh, border conflicts, which which is it's trying to have uh, with economies like India, uh, and, and much of it could be could be to divert the attention, you know, where, where it's 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 uh, it's got uh, embroiled in in, in that uh, crisis. So I think. Um, the, the good part is that India is not this time. India is not alone, right? It has it has many friends and many uh, partners, uh, allies, right? Which 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 would help, um, which will help India to uh, fight this. It's not fighting this war on on its own. It, it it's going to be a collaboration of many many countries which is going to do this uh, simultaneously. Second is uh, again that that the fact that we want to cut down on on Chinese imports. Is again not India is not trying to do it, uh, or it's not alone in, in that journey. Uh, many more economies, many more countries are trying to have that. In in, in fact, um, in some cases like chemical, like pharma, um, most of the global MNCs are now trying to to look at India because we are the next big 
global outsourcing uh, uh, destination where we have large players who can who can be an alternate uh, to china in in, in pharma and, and and chemicals so i think that's that's a big opportunity um, definitely it looks like a unknown uh, unknown uh, today but i think we're going to definitely move uh, to that quadrant of uh, known unknown as as we discussed uh, uh, very soon and maybe in a couple of quarters or maybe in this case maybe it will take us takes a year or two before we before we get into that quadrant of you know known knowns back where everything is sorted uh, china's uh, power uh, is is not as much uh, as as it used to command earlier and india and finally india is able to attract global capital and you know some of the global manufacturing units are willing to look at india and they actually end up investing money in india but that obviously will take take at least a year or two so the next question i'll first read out the question and i'll add a little bit to that question as well and he says covid is just like a disruption for medium and long term investors would it really matter and what kind of initiatives should we take in such in times of such crisis and the little part that i want to add i'm sure this is not the last crisis that we are facing we will surely have crises in the future what kind of measures should we take so that we are not the most affected if there's a crisis in the future okay so as i understand uh, what do we do in the current times um, uh, and also the how how do how are we prepared enough uh, so that you know this the next time uh, uh, what do we do with the current portfolio next time we are far better prepared uh, uh, in terms of uh, any pandemic set again so again i just think back to to our uh, best practices please keep a larger um, time frame in mind 3 to 5 years let's not look at 3 to 5 months let's not look at 3 to 5 quarters 3 to 5 years is what one one should commit himself or herself when it's investing in 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 equity market or or in stocks um point number 2 is again if one start reading news daily weekly fortnightly and starts reacting um in terms of that this is the end of the world uh I mean, I mean, you will definitely, yeah. I mean, some cases uh, like multiplex stock aviation, obviously, those are the most affected. It it will get a hammering, but over a long period of time, uh, most of them will will come back to their to their uh, uh, growth path. So, the conclusion here is ensure that the you know, as as I said, we are well diversified, right? We are looking at a long term picture. right we have little bit of gunpowder dry at 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 least for the next two quarters right it could be 10% as i said it could be 20% um for investors coming in new it could be it could be uh, it could be even 30% 40% right anybody starting new at at, at this stage uh, at at this index um so i think if you have all of that and you follow the some of the basic tenets that that we that we had highlighted right you looking at quantitative and qualitative uh, filters um you looking at you know the growth rates that this company has 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 uh, has displayed and, and and is likely to display um and obviously the sector rotation frame of that we had guided uh, or that we had alluded to at, at uh, about 20 minutes back uh, if if one keeps on moving a uh, little bit of money from one sector to another put all these things together and and you should have definitely have a portfolio which should uh, deliver not only positive returns but but returns which is which is very healthy and and uh, beating the benchmarks and obviously we are we are uh, there to handle our investors to enable him or her to construct a portfolio which is leading towards his objective uh, the, this this question has been asked by at least three or four people considering the change on in overall lifestyle what sectors seem to be the most positive as of now okay so if one is looking at um, 
the both the near term and long term opportunities uh, i think definitely telecom pharma chemical it uh, what what would be right up there right uh, insurance uh, these would be a must have uh, for, for for the next uh, for the next 3 uh, to 6 quarters uh, uh, and you know some some of the sectors and 3 to 6 quarter is, is is a must have i'm saying the proportion could be higher over a period of time the proportions could be lower but the some of the from the um, you know all weather stocks as 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 we define it um, that needs to be have a much higher weightage today because these are companies which have seen many such crises they are selling essentials they are they have a solid balance sheet their promoters of are of a pedigree which is unmatched right so if you have more of those category all weather portfolio companies i mean our, you know, we we subscribe to like 55 to 60% of the portfolios having having that then i think if you have a combination of all of this uh see the idea right now is to ensure that the portfolios are not not getting disrupted we are not losing money uh, so if we have a healthy balance of all of this three uh, then definitely you know we, we will be in a much better position two quarters one quarter two quarters later from where the next growth uh, can come in and obviously one can move in from one sector to another one stock to to another i think that the the time to take risk in some of the beaten down sectors uh, like in aviation like like uh, like multiplex like i mean ultra discretionary uh, ultra discretionary products vacation vacation uh, uh, companies uh, hotel companies and and so on and so forth uh, real estate uh, high end jewelry i think they one can definitely look at that as as an opportunity because obviously there will be prices at which the first will get discounted but we would not be in the camp which would give more than 10% allocation to such sectors uh, in an extreme case well the next question is if i want to invest in startups how do i pick them so i think uh, there are only um, uh, two ways possible one is to look at the micro caps uh, uh, who who are available today and and as 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 we as we as we had seen right 70 gross market cap kotak uh, 97 today is a 3 and a half lakh crore shri cement was 600 crore today it's 60000 crore in a period of 2002 till 2020 um i think we 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 got to look at some of those micro caps uh, but again uh, please remember that the risk appetite the investment horizon right the amount of patience right the amount of volatility that this kind of stocks is of a different magnitude so one needs to be very very uh, mindful of that fact before venturing into this arena uh, and also the percentage that one can allocate uh, i mean the 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 there are funds and there are experts who can allocate more than 25% of their funds towards this uh, but uh, it's not everyone's uh, cup of tea and the other is obviously the privately held names their opportunities are very limited because um, trying to get a share of that pie and also the the bigger um, the bigger challenge here is the amount of information uh, to get out of these privately held companies as much as as in a publicly held companies will be far far lesser Uh, but definitely i think listed micro caps small caps companies between between 500 crore market cap to to 5000 crore market cap um, there are enough opportunities and 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 one should definitely look at that arena um, but only look at that the one is not exceeding the 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 percentage allocation keeping a long term horizon the risk appetite should be higher and be aware that the volatility here could be could be could be uh, uh, very very hi um and to conclude i think that the net impact of all of this is would be if one has let's say from a from a uh, portfolio of uh, 20 stocks if one is having three small caps uh, there is a very high chance that one of them may not may not survive one of them may the 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 the, the share price may go down from where the investor bought but the the last one it could be a 10x uh, and therefore it could you know cover up for all the loss that one has seen in the other two uh, and give that big 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 alpha to the entire portfolio because even if one out of three becomes a multi bagger 
uh, and here we're talking of 5x, 20x, uh, it, it definitely boosts the entire uh, portfolio returns. So we are we are cognizant of that that arena, and, and it's part of that 33% uh, that that I discussed, uh, uh, small cap and mid cap. Uh, in fact, uh, over the next three to four months, uh, this would increase. And as I said, uh, latest by December, it should come to a steady state of 50%, where much of the much of this uh, news related pandemic starts getting uh, you know, is, is behind us. I'll take the last. I'll take the last question for the day. What would be the three things that you would recommend to navigate smoothly? in these times with the markets just just going up and down every day with the news continuously flowing again the good news bad news good news bad news flowing in again and again how should we navigate through this times time sure um uh, i think first and foremost um events come and events go Public memory, investors' memory is very, very short. Um, you know, individuals, companies, institutions—they are not built. They are not built over over one or two years. It takes decades. If they have survived till now, they will definitely survive for the next ten years. Uh, have you, so therefore, don't let's not get perturbed by um, an event which has happened, uh, which is going to take away India's growth story. Uh, Right. This this happens once in ten years. It's a it's a black swan event. It happened two thousand eight. Uh, started two thousand start of eight in two thousand uh, continued till October of two thousand eight. It has come back again after after twelve years. So such events will keep on coming. Idea is as I said, treat it as a crisis. Uh, it, the only difference is this time it's 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 a medical plus uh, financial crisis. But crisis will still keep on coming. One needs to be just. Be ready and understand that it keeps on coming in every 10 and 12 years, and we are prepared for it. Uh, point number two is our portfolios are, um, are as, I, as, I, as I discussed, well diversified, invested for the long term, moving, we are moving uh, from one sector to another, we are doing enough of sector rotation, we are taking enough advice uh, from, from professional advisors, uh, 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 portfolio advisors uh, like r, &R uh, and we are, are, are uh, having a, a pragmatic uh, approach and a pragmatic expectations. Just because a certain stock has gone up 40% right in a matter of six months cannot mean that every stock, or, or in fact, if, if one is, if, if one is uh, had, a, had a good um, uh, hand at, at picking two stocks out of, out of five, it doesn't mean that that kind of thing will continue or and vice versa, right? So let's, the, Larger message here is let's have a systematic, one should have a systematic approach to, to, to investing and, and, and wealth creation. It's, it's not a, it's not a, um, it's, 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 it's not a um, short game that, that uh, it's not a T21 is uh, treated as more as, more as a test match um, and where you, you will get, you will get definitely get five days. You will definitely get three sessions in a day, right? So three into five is 15. Therefore, we're not saying you, 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 you have 15 years as your investment horizon, but at the end of the day, five years is also uh, something that below five years is also is, is also not uh, recommended. And, and, and uh, you know, we are. This is not 2008. We this is not uh, 2005, 2000. Uh, this is 2020. We will get enough. Truck loads of information through various sources from our friends, from our from our Kirana store, from our from our uh, uh, neighbor, from our <coughs> uh, CA, right? Uh, uh, even from our children, um, right? That the world's coming to an end, and therefore, therefore, you know, uh, just focus focus on on these three things: protect protect your health, ensure that there is enough savings. Don't invest here. You know, uh, just stop spending here. I think one needs to be a little more practical and, and ensure that we're not getting distracted. Uh, uh, there will be faces, obviously, but let's not get overpowered powered by it by then. So I think these are the larger three messages uh, uh, one I, I would like to convey uh, with the with the 
lasting line that India's growth story is here to is here to stay. Uh, one one bleak year will not. Um, if if one looks at a at a at a at a ten year CAGR, we may obviously slip from seven percent to six and a half percent. But then we are not slipping from seven from seven to six and a half. But we are not deviating from. We are not coming down from seven to three percent. Uh, so it doesn't. I mean, you you compound it. It it just uh, lowers the uh, lowers the overall numbers by maybe our, our overall returns by ten or twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, that is where I stop. Um, uh, uh, wonderful talking with all of you, and uh, over to you, Harsh. Thanks a lot, Jaspreet. This was the presentation was indeed insightful, and I hope my my, my participants felt really good going through his presentation and had the questions answered. In case you have any more questions that you want you want me to address in the coming day in in the emails that I write to you in the coming days, please do send them across. CreateWealthResearch.com. I'll repeat the email ID. It is CreateWealth at researchandranking.com. Until next time, thank you very much.